So if both man and animals have nefesh or they have breath of God, then on that level you would say animals and man have no difference. They are the same. And you and I know that we are not the same. But if you only see everything from Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, then we only became breathing beings, living beings, living souls, which elephants also are. But that is not how the complete story is. So that is why we'll go to the first creation account because this is the second creation account the first creation account in Genesis chapter 1 so we jump back to Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and it says in Genesis chapter 1 27 so God created now, if you're using your Bible and the Bible is yours, uh, you can underline the word created. If the Bible is not yours, don't use pen in it. The owner will get angry with you. But if the Bible is yours, you underline created. Now, if you're using, Bishop Mike was talking about those of you who use your phone or use the iPad. If you're using your phone or the iPad, you just put your finger on the word uh, created, it will highlight and you highlight it and uh, you can make a note around it. So highlight the word created. So, so God created man in his own image, underline image or highlight image. In the image of God, underline image again, he created him, created underline, male and female, he created them. Now, when you read the Bible, or when you're studying the Bible, and you, you find a word used more than once in a verse or in a short span of scripture, you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention because it is an important word that God wants you to remember. Now, you have to understand that in Bible days, they didn't have capital letters and small letters. They had only one case. So there was no way to emphasize something using capital letters. And these days, if you want to emphasize something, you write it in capital letters. And now, even if you are using uh, your computer, you can not only do it capital letters, but you can make it bold. And in addition to being bold, you can underline it. And in underlining, apart from that, you can put exclamation marks. All of it to show this word is important. That's why I've bolded it. I have made it capital. I've underlined it. All these tools were not in there at the time the Bible was written. There was no capital letters, no bold letters, no underline, no punctuation mark. So the way for the Bible writers to make a word bold and capitalize and underline is to repeat them. They will repeat the word. So you'll find a certain word is repeated once, twice, three times. And it shows, it means that the writer wants you to pay attention to those words. That's why he's repeating them. Jesus will say, verily, verily, truly, truly, double truth. Now, we don't use double words to emphasize. We would uh, write it differently. So, let's look at the verse again. And I want you to underline and note the repeated words. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then the fourth word that is repeated is God. So four words are repeated. First, God is used twice. Recreated 
is used three times. Image is used twice. So if you isolate those repeated words, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 will read, God created image. God created image. So in Genesis chapter 1, God created image. In verse 227, he created a living soul. But in 127, in 27, created a living soul. In 127, he creates image. Everybody say image. The image there is very, very important because God created image. In the Latin, it is the imago Dei, the image of God. What is that? Animals have nefesh, but animals do not have image. Elephants have a soul, but they don't have the image of God. The only being that God created that carries his image is man. Are you following that? So if you want to separate animals from human beings, you don't separate them because they, uh, we have a soul. You separate them because we have image. What is God's image? What? Because he created us in his image. What is God's image? God is a spirit. His image is spirit. And that is what he created in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. But that image spirit needs a body. So God in chapter 2 has to create the body that the spirit can now possess and use to engage in the physical world. The interesting thing you would notice from Genesis chapter 1 is that the image is given to both male and female. But in chapter 2, the body is not for both male and female. In chapter 2, the body is of the man, Adam. And then later on, God took part of the body of the man, the rib, and made a woman. So physically, the woman came from the man. Spiritually, the woman came from God. Are you following me? So a woman does not get her spirit from the husband or from a man because God created them male and female in his own image. That also tells you that you don't pass on your spirit to your children. You pass on your physical body to your children, your genes, your DNA to your children, but the spirit always comes from God. You don't own anybody's spirit. God is the owner of the spirit. So, a husband does not impart his spirit to the wife. The wife's spirit came from God. The husband's spirit came from God. The parent's spirit came from God. The children's spirit came from God. You cannot, therefore, control people's spirits because you are not the creator of spirit but you can impart 
your body that's what happens when father and mother have a child the chromosomes come together 23 23 46 in all and a human being is born and people can say look at you and say oh you look like your father you look like your mother you have your father's nose you have your father's head or your mother's legs and so on and so forth that is only describing the dust and the nefesh but when it comes to the imago the image you are from God you are from God and the spirit because it came from God is answerable to God that is why God will judge the spirit because it came from him and the spirit must always be submitted to God if it is not submitted to God it will be judged one day and uh, I will talk about that later uh, when we talk a little bit more about the spirit and the soul so when God created man and he said to him have dominion the body had not been created so he was not talking to the physical person to have dominion he was talking to the spirit man to have dominion when God says have dominion he's not talking to your soul your emotions your feelings your intellect he's talking to the spirit in you when God speaks and makes a command to you you have to hear that from your spirit not from your soul the problem is you know many times God speaks to us and we think he's speaking to our body you know that's why many times God God will say to uh, to people mighty man of valor Gideon and he says who am I because Gideon's evaluation of himself is his body God's evaluation of himself is the image he has put into him whatever God says to you he's saying to your spirit but your spirit must get it so that your mind will accept it and your body manifest it so if we are talking about God's glory coming upon us and the exceeding glory of God manifesting in our lives and the greatness of the glory it is not coming upon your flesh you see that's why many people think if 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 you receive God's power there must be a physical manifestation of, of course maybe once in a while there, may, there can be a physical manifestation but God's spirit is not dependent on a physical manifestation to work in your life when God crowns you with power you may not feel it physically in your body but that is no excuse to think you don't have the power when the glory of God rests upon you you may not see any physical evidence that there is glory upon you but the glory is still upon you when God gave us his spirit he gave us dominion Psalm 8 from verse 4 to 8 the psalmist is thinking about us human beings what is man that you are mindful of him the son of man that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than the angels you've crowned him with glory and honor you've made him to have dominion over the works of your hands you put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen even the beasts of the field the birds of the air the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea all the things that man has dominion over they also have breath the fish of the sea the beasts of the field and all of that now if they all have breath and man has breath then on what basis can have man have dominion over them not on the basis of the soul but on the basis of the spirit through the spirit we exercise dominion over every other created thing of God by his spirit 
And if we learn to function in the spirit, then we walk in the fullness of power that the spirit of God has given to us. To walk in authority, our spirits, souls, and bodies must come together. A lot of our Christian life, unfortunately, has become very based on the physical. I think it's because we are tilting more and more into physical things like anointing oil like special blessed things the more we do that the more people begin to feel that until they feel something physically it is not happening in their lives I believe in anointing using the anointing oil to symbolize God's presence in, in, our, in our lives but I don't believe in pouring buckets and bottles of anointing oil on people somebody says why I said you know Jesus gave us the communion how many of you know that Jesus said we should take communion and, and when we are taking communion do we go to church with a big loaf of bread ten loaves of bread because we are eating the body of Christ I have to eat a lot of the body of Christ and just quaff all these and then take three bottles of wine why don't we take three bottles of wine and ten loaves of bread at communion we take a small piece and a small oil why because we understand it is only a symbol a representation of the body of Christ in the same way we don't need a lot of oil to show we are anointed just a little tap on your body is all that you need to remind you that the Holy Spirit represented by the oil has taken possession of your body of your life of your spirit and is working in you are, are you following what I'm saying because if we don't do that people will begin to have more faith in oil than in the spirit that is in them as a matter of fact while you are praying for them anointing them they, they are looking to the man of God and not looking to God who is the one who anoints to manifest his grace through them and people don't receive anything people don't receive anything people don't I mean I, I have grown to, when I was a young preacher pastor I was happy when I lay hands on people they fall under the power these days I'm not excited when I lay hands on people, I tell them, stand. This is a serious world. You can't you can be sleeping and, and, and live in this world. Stand. Stand. Think. So I'm laying hands on you. Receive it. Know what you have received. Be aware of it. Be conscious of it. And walk in it. Don't, don't fall down. What are you falling down for? I mean, just rolling up and down, rolling. I, I appreciate that. I mean, it may mean something is happening to you. But you think this is how you're going to overcome in life, rolling on the floor? Once in a while, you may be prayed for and you may sense the power of God move in you in a supernatural way that your body feels weak and you fall. But when you fall, you get up quickly. Isn't that, what, isn't that what Jesus said to Paul when Saul was slain uh, on the road to Damascus? He's lying down. Jesus, who are you talking to me? Jesus, he says, get up. Get up. Go to Damascus. Somebody is there to meet you and tell you about some things. You don't can lie down here, Jesus, who are you? Lord Jesus, who are you? Get up. All right, so I, I appreciate all our Pentecostal charismatic dynamics. I, I, I appreciate it, I'm part of it, but I think it's time we bring people to the awareness of the dynamics of what God is doing in their lives, of His power at work in us, of His spirit moving in us. 
Because if we don't get it right, Bishop, we get to the point where young pastors are going around, turning people around and, hold, you know, moving them, moving them, moving them. Of course, if you move somebody in circles, they will fall down dizzy. They will get dizzy. Why wouldn't they fall down? And why are we so fixated on people falling? So anyway, whatever happens, whatever God wants to give to us, he gives to our spirit. Whatever God wants to give to us. Even when he's blessing us materially, he blesses our spirits. And then our spirit will manifest it. And that is why the unity of spirit, soul, body is so critical. And I'm going to show you how God instructed Israel to go about it. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 5. Chapter 6, verse 4 and 6. 4 and 5, sorry. Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 6. This is what is called the Shema. The Shema is the, is the most important declaration of Judaism. Uh, because it is the declaration of their faith of who God is. And, 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 and so every Jew in prayer would recite this uh, in, in their prayer. And, and I want you to listen to the Shema. And Jesus actually repeated this. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord our God, the Lord is how many? One. And there is a reason he's saying this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Your heart, which sometimes is called the spirit. Your soul, your intellect, your will, your emotions. Your strength from your body. They are three parts. But... Before he talked about the three parts, he said, the Lord your God is one. And although you have a spirit and a soul and a body, you must worship the Lord your God with all of them as one. As one. So in Christian worship, you don't go to church where you say, you know, my spirit is in the service, but my body is somewhere else. Or some people who stay and say, you know, today I didn't go to church, but I'm with you in spirit. As if we, we throw our spirit to go to church and our bodies sleep at home. We don't do astral projection in Christianity. That's for another religion. But he says your spirit, your soul, and your body, although different entities must be one, just like I, Jehovah, have different persons, but one God. So all, now we know in Christian doctrine what we call the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. But it's one. Body, soul, spirit is one. So when I worship God and, I, and I, my spirit is exalting him, with my mouth I praise him and with my body I lift up my hands. What I'm doing is my spirit, my soul and body are all one in worshiping the Lord. And that is how God wants us to worship him. We serve him with the totality of spirit, of soul and of body. So there are some people who believe that, you know, when you sin, your body has sinned. Your spirit has not sinned. You know, sometimes I don't know how people generate these ideas. I think there is probably lack of theological education. Adam and Eve, did they sin? Did their spirits get, become contaminated? Did they pass on sin to the human race? 
What did they do? They ate a fruit. Is it spiritual? So their body took an action that affected their spirit. Their body took an action and it affected the spirit. So don't come and tell me uh, I, I fornicated, but it was only my body. My spirit was not involved. There's no spirit. My spirit is still holy. No, you, you, you take a physical action and it affects you. Why? Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. You cannot say, my mind is thinking impure thoughts. But I'm, I'm okay. Jesus didn't think so. Jesus actually think that if your mind was thinking one way, it can contaminate your spirit. So the Christian life, we are not living a tripartite life. We are living a whole life. When God blesses you, the blessing on your spirit must come on your mind and must come on your body. That is why when he's blessing you, he wants your mind to engage in the blessing. He said to Abraham, You are the father of many nations. Whom was he talking to? Abraham's body, uh, body didn't look like father of many nations. The spirit. But Abraham's mind couldn't get it. The soul couldn't get what the spirit has received. The spirit has received father of many nations. But the mind couldn't get it and so God says okay come out and let me show you what I'm talking about look to the skies look to the sand see if you can count them he's engaging his intellect and he says so shall your descendants be what I spoke to you in the spirit I want you to understand it in your mind then you can manifest it in your body so when we talk about God's exceeding grace coming upon you exceeding glory coming upon you don't expect in this service that you may be shaking you know we used to think that was a spirit we say the anointing is upon him who so, who knows maybe he's just nervous maybe he's just nervous i'm not saying that may not be the spirit of god but don't conclude it may be that a person having just an emotional experience when god blesses you you may not even feel anything So when God says to Abraham, you are the father of many nations, he felt nothing. If he had felt something, he would have believed that this thing would happen. But he kept telling God, show me a sign. And God showed him a mental picture of what his spirit has already received. And when he got that mental picture, then his body received strength to execute what his spirit has received for 25 years there is exceeding glory upon you I will say it again there is exceeding glory upon you the answer to your prayer has already been released Ephesians says that we are blessed not with physical blessings with all spiritual blessings in Christ when the Bible says we are blessed with all spiritual who, who do you think is the we who has been blessed your spirit your spirit if you're looking for your body to show that you've been blessed you may never walk in the blessing 
God blesses your spirit, but your mind must engage. And that is why I've come to the point where I am more committed to teaching Christians to understand than anything else. Because if you don't understand it, you may have it, but never live in it. Most of the things we've been praying for, God has done it already. He's done it. When did he make Abraham a father of many nations? Was it when Isaac was born? No. 25 years earlier. How did he catch up? It took him 25 years for his mind and body to reconcile with what his spirit already knew. God has already released the blessing. He's already increased you. He's already given you the breakthrough. But we have to come into a mental understanding of what he has given to us. One of the most beautiful prayers in the New Testament was prayed by the mother of Jesus Christ, Mary, in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 and 47. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior soul and spirit both in worship to the Lord she's not just saying my spirit is excited or my soul is excited but both are excited that's where God wants us to get to where our emotions our will our intellect is in full agreement with God's promises God's word and what he's doing in your life he made you a spirit and when he speaks to you, he primarily speaks to your spirit. When God promises you, his promise is to your spirit. When you read a promise in the Bible and you claim in it, it's not first a physical blessing. It's a spiritual blessing which must be manifested in your, in your life and in your body. Healing Start spiritual before it becomes physical. So if you're waiting, if you're judging, you're healing by your physical feelings. You may think you're not healed. But God has healed you. Jesus himself took our infirmities in his own body. He carried our pain, our diseases, by whose stripes we are healed. Not we may be healed, we can be healed, we should be healed, or thinking about being healed. We are. It's an accomplished fact. You are healed. Someone said, well, I'm healed. If I'm healed, how come I'm still sick? Go and ask Abraham why he's still the father of many nations and has no child. The problem is not the promise of God. The problem is that your mind has not come into agreement with the spirit of God and what he has spoken to your spirit for your body to manifest it. And by the end of this conference, we're going to see physical manifestations. Physical manifestations of that which your spirit has received. Some of you received it 10 years ago. It will manifest. Some of you received it five years ago. It will manifest. Instead of praying about the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, you just have to believe that the day you spoke to God about it, he heard it. And when he heard it, he dispatched the answer. And your spirit received it. And from that time on was heaven recorded, prayer answered. But how come I'm still sick? How come I still haven't received it? Because something in your mind is telling you unless something physical happens, it does not happen. I believe that there are many blessings sitting inside of us which have not yet manifested. 
and the Spirit of God will help us to come into the full realization of what God has spoken to us about. When God makes you rich, you don't get money. Bishop Bismarck was talking about heaps and heaps of blessing. Heaps and heaps of blessing. What, what were you picturing? I saw some of you had lifted your hand as if you were carrying, you know, a basket. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. I'm, I'm, uh, it's okay. I mean, you, some of you are doing that heaps. You think it is coming over your head? Is it, you think that's where it's coming? The heaps and heaps, heaps. No, it's coming into your spirit. It's heaps and 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 overflow and overflow and overflow and overflow and overflow. Once you begin to destroy and dismantle the high places, the altars of ignorance, the altars of tradition, the altars of the fear of man, once you dismantle them, you open yourself to the heaps of blessing. And you may not feel anything, but you have heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps of blessing. Somebody say, I have it. It's my spirit. So there has to be a point in your life where you sign the dotted line and you say, God, on the 21st of November, 2022, at Trem, as Bishop Bismarck was ministering, he declared heaps of blessing. And from that day, I receive it. That means from this day onwards, I will never consider myself not blessed. My mind has to cooperate with my spirit. I will not go anywhere else asking people, can you bless me? Please bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Because some of you, everywhere you go, you present your head. For hands to be laid on you. Everybody's laying hands on you. And, and you know what, what you're doing? You are saying, I don't think I received anything. I don't think I got it from Bishop Bismarck. I think, I think if, if, if uh, Bishop Mike prays for me, I think it will come. No, I don't think I got it from me. I think if, if uh, uh, Pastor Deboyo pray for me, I think it will come. What you're doing is that your mind can't recognize that at a point in your life, God poured blessing upon your spirit. It took Abraham 25 years. And Sarah, 25 years. But there came a time when Sarah herself received strength because she counted him faithful. Now all these 25 years, what was she doing? She didn't count God faithful. But one time she says, God is faithful. I don't need prayer for this again. God is faithful. God has done it. I know it. I have it in my spirit. And I believe I have it and I've received it. And walk in it. And if you learn to live your Christian life that way, the blessings of the Lord will manifest in your life. Somebody say amen. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Heaps upon heaps. Heaps upon on, this day, on this day, the 21st of November, 2022, in this place, at this kingdom conference, a trem, I received the blessing of God in my spirit, in abundance heaps upon heaps i have it in my spirit i don't need it any longer i have it now my spirit bears witness that i'm blessed i am blessed i am blessed and now i bring my mind my soul my understanding my will 
my emotions into alignment with the blessing of the Lord and so today I declare I am blessed and I know it I am blessed and I know it I am blessed and I know it I refuse to doubt it any longer I know it 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 I have it and the angel said to Mary blessed is she who has believed for there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken there will not be a repetition of those things that were spoken there will be a performance of those things that were spoken they will not be spoken over and over and over and over you're not going to be prayed for the same thing no angel is going to come it's not going to be michael the next time and another angel coming to tell you the same thing he says it's settled today there shall be a performance of those things that have been spoken and so i declare over your life there is a performance of those things that have been spoken tonight heaps of blessings heaps of blessings heaps of blessings performance in your life if you believe that give the lord a mighty shout and a praise hallelujah hallelujah somebody say i have it Oh, hallelujah. We're going to receive our offering. We give by faith. We give by faith. We don't give by force. We give by faith. Faith comes when your mind is in alignment with God. And you know what God has said will come to pass. We're going to give our offering, but I understand that Pastor Matthew raised and challenged people to give yesterday. And some of you made pledges and you said you were going to, oh, today. Yesterday and today. Um, and, and you made commitments to give. You didn't make a commitment to Pastor Matthew. You made a commitment to God. You made a commitment to God. And that's how you have to always see it. This is unto the Lord. It is the Lord that I believe. It is the Lord that I trust. My spirit latches on to the blessing spoken. And every blessing he spoke, attending the obedience of giving, will be performed in your life. So if you are here and you want to redeem your commitment that you made and you have the fulfillment here, I'm going to ask you, Bishop, can they come forward? You can come forward and I will pray for you. We just want to understand this God is faithful he's a faithful God he's a faithful God he's a faithful God and whatever you have received in your spirit out of this obedience will manifest so just lift up your offering and say today I act in faith and in obedience to the promise of God and I declare over my life that my mind 
my soul comes into full agreement with my spirit and so I declare today that in the realm of the physical there is a manifestation of the promise of God over my life in Jesus name amen what you do in obedience God will reward in abundance in Jesus name you can place your offering here and walk in the victory of the Lord walk in the favor of God walk in the abundance of God and every blessing attendant to your obedience manifest in your life in the name of Jesus we're going to give our offering and uh, I just want you to give as the Lord has blessed you give with understanding give with clarity of purpose give with a full commitment that God is faithful that what he tells you to do uh, he will honor in your life and uh, I think Bishop what's gonna happen the band will the band will take us uh, give us minister to us and the ushers will come and will give to the Lord
the Lord. One of the things I said yesterday and it bears repetition, don't leave the auditorium. Thank God the committee has made arrangement for transportation. Don't begin to rush out once the speaker finishes speaking. Some of this behavior border on dishonoring God. It borders on dishonoring God. When you dishonor God, he will not esteem you high. Don't do it. We, we often do that and we think we are smart. The service is not over. There is need for us to together live here after sharing the benediction. Very important. And if you listen closely to the Dr. Otabil's teaching, that's a real key issue concerning the church. We like that jig, rattle, and roll type of service. But the, what the church is lacking is information. If we, have it, if we receive information, our struggles will not, we will really struggle. If we can only have enough information, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. That's why Paul prayed for the church for revelation. That was his passion. At least I, I can count about three times that he was passionate about praying for the church to have revelation. And Peter also caved into it that the church must have revelation. One can be blessed and still go about without, not because he's not blessed, but because he doesn't have information. And that the devil doesn't care about your coming to church, jump up, jump down, and uh, do all the gymnastics as long as you are ignorant. That's why you come to conferences like this. Like I s said in the opening night, here and your soul will live. Here and your soul shall live. Please don't take this. This is the day two. We are closing. We are going into day three tomorrow. And there are lots of things that are already lined out for us. So I encourage you to be here on time. In the morning, the, the leader session is coming up. And uh, we'll close it around the 12 o'clock in the noon. And then in the night, two sessions again. So it's important. Make sure you didn't come to Lagos for just another vacation. You, my prayer is that you receive something. Something that will be manifest in your life. So that we can see a tangible testimony. Can I hear a loud amen? All right, the announcement will come up and then we will be dismissed. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Hilda Shayo Adebayo. I'm sure you've been blessed by the two word sessions from tonight. Please listen to the following reminders. The conference continues tomorrow with two sessions in the morning and evening by 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. respectively. Pastors and leaders are reminded to be in attendance from 9 a.m. The KLWC Skills Acquisition Graduation Ceremony holds on Wednesday by 9 a.m. The special edition of the International Women Prayer Conference with the theme Overflow holds here in the Cathedral of His Glory by 9 a.m. prompt on Thursday. Good news, men are also welcome. The graduation ceremony of the God's Army Bible College holds on Friday, 25th November, 2022. Time is 9 a.m. You are all invited. Application forms for admission into the God's Army Bible College for the 2023 academic year are on sale at the college office. 
The entrance exam for admission into the diploma program holds on Saturday, 26 November 2022, and time is 12 noon. The Zama Concert Sounds of Africa edition holds this Friday from 9 p.m. We will be praising, raising our voices, and making music to God till our shoes come off. So, endeavor to buy your Zama t-shirts from the KLWC stand before they run out. There is a free gift inside for every t-shirt bought. Hurry now while stock lasts. The KLWC Green Room is open to KLWC partners and the partner's brooch admits. Any KLWC partner without a brooch, please see Sister Vicky or Reverend Ashefo. For the on-site audience, please remain seated once the service ends for after the service formalities. Throughout the course of the conference, testimonies are set to roll out in their numbers. We want to hear yours. Remember, the testimony is already yours, but the glory goes to God alone. So share them with us via testimonies at trem.org so we can honor God's goodness in your life. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of this glorious service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we rise? Please, before, as we just share the benediction, I want every one of us to get seated just for one minute so that you'll be directed how to exit the auditorium. Praise the Lord. It's very important. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you, strengthen, and establish you. Give your inheritance among those who are sanctified in the name of Jesus. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Please, just get seated just for one minute. I promise you it will not be more than one minute. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so...